Hi, today we are going to be continuing where we last left off in the previous video. We are going to be adding functionality to our contact section. So here's a demo of what that would look like. The user would enter their name, their email, and some message that they want to send to you. They will receive a confirmation that it has been sent, and then you will receive that email in your inbox. In order to do this, we'll be using a couple of different libraries such as Zod, Formic, as well as NodeMailer and React Email to send the emails, and a few other libraries. So yeah, let's get started. So we are continuing where we last left off in the previous video. We are going to go down to our contact us section and this is the area where we are going to be focusing on. The first thing we need to do is we need to install some dependencies. So I am going to stop the current server. So the first few things that we are going to install are Zod as well as Formic. And those packages are going to help us with validation and our form handling. We are also going to install NodeMailer node mailer SMT transport, as well as react email components. Once we got that installed, we are also going to install a Zod to Formic adapter. And we are going to need this because we are using Zod with Formic. And then lastly, we need to save our types. So we have our types for the node mailer, as well as for the node mailer SMT transport. So then we are going to install those. So that should be all of our dependencies that we need. If we then go ahead and do an npm run div, we should be all good and our server should be running again. After we've installed those dependencies, we are going to create a couple files. So the first one is we are going to create a .env file. And with that, we are also going to include a .env template. The environmental variables that we are going to create are Google underscore email as well as Google underscore password. And we will be using those in a little bit. Going to copy and paste it into our ENV file. So we should be set. We are then going to create a utils folder. And inside that folder, we are going to create a validations file as well as a node mailer file. The next thing we are going to create is inside our components, we are going to create two files. We are going to create a form file as well as an email file. And we will get to those in a little bit. And then lastly, inside our app directory, we are going to create an API route. Within that API folder, we are going to create a contact folder. And inside contact, we are going to create a route file. So those are going to be all the files that we are going to be working with. So I'm going to go through each one and walk through how they are connected and we will add to those files. The first one I'm going to start off with is our validations file. Inside our validations, we are going to import our Zod library that we just installed. Then we are going to create this constant called validation, called validation schema. We are referencing the object that we just imported we are calling the object and inside of it, we are passing in a couple parameters. These parameters are name, email, and message. These are the inputs to our form. And with each one, we require there to be a string. So, so when the user presses the button, they're not able to send their message unless all these inputs are filled. And if they are not, there will be an error message showing on the bottom and we will see that in a second. So once we've got that set up, then we are going to go into our node mailer file. Inside node mailer, there are a couple things that we need to import. We need to import our node mailer as well as our SMP transport from our node mailer SMT transport library. We are also going to create some constants that we are going to be exporting. First one is SMT email, and then we are going to be referencing our environmental variable that we just created, which we will add to in a second, as well as the SMTP password. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to create another constant called transporter. And within transporter, we are going to be referencing node mailer. We're going to create a transport and within this transport, we are going to be using SMP transport and passing in some items into that. So we have service as well as auth. Within auth, we have user as well as pass. So let's fill in these items. So service, we are going to be using Gmail for this example. The user that we are going to pass in is our SMTP email, put a comma after, and then we are also for our password, we are going to be using the SMTP password. So at the end, this is what our node mailer file should look like. 
So let's go ahead and add to our .env file. So for this example, I'm going to be using my personal email and Google allows you to set a app password if you want to. So what we are going to do is we're going to go to Google. Inside Google, if you type app password Gmail, it'll send you here. I'm going to select this one. It'll redirect me to log in and I'll show you what it looks like once I'm logged in. So once you're logged in, this is what your page should look like. So you have app passwords. We are going to create a custom app. We're just going to name it no mailer. Once we named it, then we click generate and it'll generate us a password. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into here. So that's the password that we are going to use instead of our personal password for our email. I'm going to input my email. So that's how you set that up. The next thing we're going to be working on is we are going to work on our form section. So let's go back to our form. In the code currently, we have our whole contact section here. What I want to do is separate this form and put it in another file so it's a little bit more modular. So here we are going to create a functional component. We are going to name it contact form. Once we do that, then we are going to go inside our contact code and we are going to copy only our form. So that will be this entire section. Yep, right there. Then when we look back here, you see that it's removed. If we go inside form, going to paste it inside here. And then now we are going to import it back inside. So we are going to do contact form and then it should import. Now, if we go back down, our form should come back here. So that's nice. So now we can work on it independently from our contact section. So here's our form. Now within our form, there are a couple things that we need to import. So we need to import the validation schema that we created earlier. So we got that imported. Next thing we need to import is our formic items. So this is what we have here and we're going to be using that in a second. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to add use client at the top because we're going to be using use state. And since we're using use state from my previous video, like I mentioned, then we are going to need to make this a client component. Then right underneath here, we are going to include a type for our form value, which we are going to pass into our handle submit function, which you will see. And inside our contact form, we are going to be creating an is loading variable. Underneath that variable, then we are going to be creating an handle submit function, which we are going to be calling from within our formic form. Once we've done that, then we could go inside a return statement. We are going to use formic. Then we're going to wrap it around our divs. Once we do that, then we need to add some initial values to our form. So what that will look like is something like this. So these are our variables that we need to pass in and they all are initially empty strings. The next thing we need to do is add our validation schema. Our validation schema is the one that we just imported. And then lastly, our on submit button, which is going to be triggering our handle submit function. Once we have that, then we are going to be using our form components, wrapping it around our divs. Once we've done that, then we are going to be replacing all of our inputs with our field component that we imported from Formic. Here, we want to get rid of that, make it like this. And since it was a text message field, we're going to set it as text area. The next thing we are going to do is use our error message component. Let's put them in all of them right underneath the field. So then we pass it into here and it looks something like this. And then for our other ones, we just need to make sure that we need to change the name to the appropriate name. So now I think it's looking pretty good. If we go down to our form, you see that our items are misaligned a little bit. I have to go back into our contact section again and probably copy these two items and put it and wrap it around here. So now if we go down, everything should look good. Nice, so that was just a formatting issue. After we do that, the next thing we need to do is use our two formic validation schema that we imported from our Zod formic adapter. We need to wrap that around our validation schema. Without that, it will give us some errors. So now when we try to submit, 
then you see our error show up. So that's the cool thing about validation. It makes sure that the user inputs the expected input. So now if you put something like a name, something like that, then if we go into our console, then you see that an object shows up and this is the object that's being passed. And you see that we're logging it right here inside our handle submit function. So we'll get to that in one second. Now, since we have our values, we want to pass it to our API. So we send the message that we want to our email. What we are going to do is we need to go into our API file that we, that we created and we are going to add some things here. First thing we need to do is import next request and next response. From there, we want to import render from react email as well as transport or er, as well as transporter and the SMT email that we created earlier. We also want to import one more thing that we haven't created yet. So let's go create that. If we go inside our email file, it's empty. So here is where we're going to create what our email is going to look like. So we're going to create a functional components inside our email. We are going to be importing a couple items. So you see we imported items from react email as well as we have our interface for our email props. And then I'm going to replace this whole section with our email of what it's going to look like. So we see here in TypeScript, we are passing in our email props into our function, as well as we have our variables like name, email, and message that are going to be passed in. And then this is what our email is going to look like. It's just a very simple email. It says that we got a message and then it's going to input what the information from the form looks like. So the user's name, email, and their message. So we'll be seeing that in one second. If you want to change the layout of this, you can look at react email documentation and get some inspiration from there. But for now, I'm going to stick with this. We are going to then go back and then import email here. So we are good with our email file. So we are going to create a post function and within our post function, we are going to be creating a couple constants. So we have our body, which is the body of whatever our request is. And then we are calling those items from within that dictionary. Then from there, we are going to create an email HTML. So this is the HTML that's going to be sent to your email. So we are using the render from react email slash components. And then the email component that we just created, we are passing in these variables. Once we've done that right below it, we are going to create a constant of options. And within here, we are passing in the SMT email that we have provided. So what the email will look like is that it looks like it's coming from you since we don't have access to the user's email password. There's no way for us to send an email on their behalf. So a workaround right now is just using our own email and sending us and sending ourselves an email with that information that they've inputted. And then the subject line of the email will look like this. You could change it to whatever you want. And then right below, we are going to be inputting our try and catch statement. So once we have all this information, then we are going to be sending that mail. If it doesn't work, then it's going to fall inside our catch statement. And then lastly, we are going to be returning a response of okay if everything works well. So this is our API. So now we're done with that. We could go back to our form. Now we are going to go back here and change what's inside our handle submit. I'll paste in the code for that and walk through what's in it. So here after pasting the code, you could see that we are expecting our values as well as we have a set submitting and a re reset form. So when we hit our handle submit, we are going to go inside this try catch statement. We are fetching the API that we just created and we are passing in the values that we are receiving from the form. So you see the body here, it's the same body that we created in our API and that we were referencing. And then what it's going to do is going to reset the form. So we are not going to keep these values. The form is going to reset. And the last thing it's going to log the email has sent successfully. And finally setting set submitting to false. So it's no longer sending that email. So now we could go ahead and try this out to see if everything works. So if you press the button, the email is sent and you see that our form gets reset. If we look inside our console, we could see that if we could see if it was successful or not, we get a notification email was successfully sent. So here's my email just got a submission right now. I can see I just received an email from Jane and their email is this. And then this is the message that they sent. So that's how you create a contact form. So there's one more item that I'm going to add and it's up to you if you want to include it or not. It's just a nice animation. 
So there are two more packages that we are going to be installing. They are React Toastify and React Confetti. So once we have them installed, we could do an npm run div. So here are the packages that we are going to be importing, our Toast container and Toast from React Toastify, as well as our Confetti from React Confetti. And since we are using React Toastify, they ask you to add their CSS into your app. So we are going to be putting it in here inside our layout right underneath our globals.css file so now we could go back to our form don't forget to do this or else it's not going to work so inside our contact form we are going to be creating another constant called show confetti and we are going to set it to false initially and it turns into true as soon as the user is done submitting their form so we are going to be putting it inside our finally statement so underneath here, we are going to include toast.success. This is the message that is going to be shown as well as show confetti is equal to true. And then right underneath our formic form, we are going to include our toaster container, which is what is going to show up once the user has submitted, as well as confetti is only shown when show confetti is true. So let's go test that out right now. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So when the user enters their email name and message, and if we press the button, we see that the form has successfully been submitted. And then we get this nice animation of confetti. That notification goes away and then the form is reset if the user wants to send another message. So yeah, that's it for our form. That's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. Like always, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below. And until next time. <laughs>